I know this is the, the week when there's just so much joy and excitement and everything is really wonderful. But, but then, and I had a sermon already. Um, and then this week in our country, our nation, and some of the sadnesses of the people in our congregation, in our community, just really touched me. And, uh, and I found a story. And I would like to read this story to you. It's written by a woman named Edna Hong. I had the privilege of meeting Edna a couple times. She was a great writer, a poet, a philosopher. She and her husband translated the works of the great theologian Soren Kierkegaard. And this story is one that she had written in a compilation of stories in a book, Bright Valley of Love. And then there was a pastor, Edward Marquardt, who who edited this story to preach. It's a story about a little boy named Gunther who lived in Germany. When Gunther was born, he was severely deformed. His father was off fighting the war, and his mother, as soon as she saw him, deserted him. So his grandma ended up taking care of little Gunther. Well, Gun grandma was thoroughly ashamed of this little baby. As far as she was concerned, he was nothing but human junk. In fact, that's what she used to call him. Come here, you little piece of human junk, she would say. Grandma looked at Gunther. All she saw were deformed, curved bones. Deformed foot bones and ankle bones and leg bones and finger bones and wrist bones and arm bones and jaw bones. She had no doubt that Gunther was a piece of human junk. Gunther couldn't talk. The only thing he could cry was, Awana, 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 and his head rolled from side to side. He was kept in the back room for years, so nobody could see him back there. Of course, Gunther wasn't really sad about this situation, being locked in a dark back bedroom. I mean, if you'd never seen a cherry tree, you'd never miss seeing the blossoms of a cherry tree. If you'd never tasted rich, succulent cherries, you would never miss tasting that delicious delight. Gunther had never seen any of the wonders of the world or tasted them, so he wasn't really sad. He didn't know what he was missing. The only thing of color that he ever saw was once a week, the neighbors on their clothesline would hang a red checkered tablecloth, and it would flutter in the breeze outside the window in Gunther's bedroom, and he could see that bright red and white flash against the blue sky, and he would smile. One day, some mischievous boys from the neighborhood stole into Grandma's house while she was away shopping. And these mischievous boys found this little human animal on this bed in the back bedroom. They'd never seen anything like it in their lives, and they took their sticks and they started to jab it. Looked like a bent-up little animal. And when Grandma came home, she was absolutely outraged. Not at the mischievous boys, but that someone had discovered her secret. Grandma was so mad, in fact, that she decided to take action. She decided to send her piece of human junk to Bethel, a home for physically deformed children in northern Germany. This is a true story, by the way. Just before she was going to leave with Gunther to Bethel, Gunther sensed that there was something wrong. For seven years, he'd been locked up in the safety of a back bedroom, and for seven years, he had known only Grandma. 
and his eyes panicked. And he added one word to his vocabulary. I don't wanna, I don't wanna. But he was taken away. He was taken away to Bethel, which means house of God. And there he stayed in a house by the name of Patmos. He was brought into this house, into this new world, and he couldn't believe his eyes. He looked and on every table, there was a bright red checkered tablecloth. <sighs> he couldn't believe the beauty that he saw. Life started to grow by leaps and bounds and slowly and miraculously. Gunther learned to talk. People started to learn that Gunther was not mentally handicapped. He was only physically handicapped. And no one at Patmos treated him like a pile of junk. For in the eyes of God, he was not junk. He was a child of his loving father, God. In the bed next to Gunther was a little boy by the name of Kirk. Kirk had epileptic seizures, and he had lots of other problems, and he was terminally ill. He was getting ready to die. His father had been killed in the war, his mother had died of pneumonia, and little Kirk had no family to take care of him. Kirk was very sad, because unlike Gunther, he had known the love of his family. So late at night, Kirk would tell young Gunther what a mommy and a daddy were like, warm and tender and kind. And the more Gunther listened, the more that Kirk's mother and father became Gunther's imaginary mommy and daddy. And one day in November, Kirk said to Gunther, by Christmas, I'm going to be with Mommy and Daddy in the Christmas room in heaven. And little Gunther asked, what is Christmas? And Kirk said, you don't know what Christmas is? Christmas is so good. It is so wonderful. It's the best time of the year, and I'm going to be with my Mommy and Daddy by Christmas time. No. No, Kirk, I don't want you to go. Kirk said, but I want to go home with my mom and dad. So Kirk and Gunther talked away into the night like brothers. Well, time went by, and it was Advent. And then soon, it was the fourth Sunday in Advent. And on the fourth Sunday in Advent, all the children gathered around the Advent wreath to light the fourth candle. And Pastor Fritz was going to have Kirk light the fourth Advent candle because he knew that this would be Kirk's last Christmas with him, and he was trying to make everything special for Kirk. So Kirk took the candle in his hand to put it on the wreath, but then he started to have an epileptic seizure, and he dropped the candle on the floor, and it cracked. And then he started to have a full-blown seizure, and one of the staff had to come and pick him up and carry him out of the room until he would calm down. Meanwhile, Pastor Fritz took the cracked candle and kind of put it back together and put it up and lit the candle and invited the children to start singing a hymn. And they were shouting loud, and, and it was hard for everyone to hear when Gunther shouted out, Everything has a crack in it! And everyone stopped singing. And there was a silence. A silence so loud you could hear it. And Gunther said to Pastor Fritz, everything has a crack in it. What is so special about Christmas anyway? And Pastor Fritz looked around at the children. Children, Gunther wants to know what's so special about Christmas. Can you help him? 
and all the children, the mentally and the physically handicapped, began using their minds and thinking, and, and Monica sang out brightly, Gloria Susanna, Gloria Susanna, which, which means Gloria Hosanna, and, and then Manfred, whose mind only thought in numbers, started saying 1225, 1225, 1225, the 12th month, the 25th day. And Pastor Fritz said, thank you so much, Monica. Thank you, Manfred. And then Petra, whose body was 30 years old, but whose mind was five years young, shouted happily, baby Jesus, baby Jesus. Oh, thank you, Petra, that helps. And then little Lenny, an eight-year-old blind girl, suddenly beamed. And she said, Christmas is special because everything has a crack in it. And Pastor Fritz smiled and he said, you're right, Lenny, everything has a crack in it. And the crack is ever so much bigger than you and I can see. God is the only one who can see how big that crack really is. Gunther, everything has a crack in it, big cracks and little cracks. And the reason that God sent Jesus was to show us that God loves everything with a crack in it. And Jesus helps to patch up those cracks so they aren't so big anymore. And when you get to the Christmas room in heaven, there won't be any cracks anymore. And Gunther nodded as, as if he understood. Well, the days passed, and now it was Christmas Eve, and it was the time of telling the Christmas story with Pastor Fritz, and all the children were gathered around, and Pastor Fritz said, I would, like, I would like Kirk to sit on my lap because this is his last Christmas with us, and I would like Gunther to sit on the other side of my lap because it's his first Christmas with us. And he told the story, and he had little figurines of angels and shepherds and wise men. And the sheep seemed like real sheep to the children, and the wise men seemed real, and it seemed like the whole scene was coming alive. And when it came to the climax of the story, little Lenny couldn't contain herself when she said, the baby Jesus is born. And Monica sang at the top of her lungs, Gloria Susanna, Gloria Susanna, and Manfred muttered, 1225, 1225, and they all praised God. And Gunther loved the story. Before Gunther ha knew, knew what was happening, there was another kind of jubilation in the room. Everyone was running and shouting. Everybody knew what it was about but Gunther. The children began to receive presents. There was a doll for Monica, a teddy bear for Lenin, a toy truck for Manfred. They were excited, but it didn't even dawn on Gunther that there would be a present for him. And when his name was actually read, it still didn't dawn on Gunther that there was a present for him. Finally, when the present was in his hands, it dawned on him that indeed there was a present with his name on it. Gunther had never received a present before. He opened it with big eyes and he said, my, my, my toy train. He fondled the engine and he looked at the coal car and the caboose. It was beautiful. Pastor Fritz said, that's what Christmas is all about, Gunther. God gives a gift to you with your name on it. The Christ child was given for you. Gunther was so pleased. And then Pastor Fritz said, it's time to go to be with Kirk, to say our goodbyes. And there he was lying in his bed and holding a beautiful wooden carving of Jesus' mother Mary and the baby Jesus. And Kirk said, she looks just like my mommy. And the children said their goodbyes. And Gunther said, when you go to that Christmas room, tell mommy and daddy I love them. And Kirk said, I will. On Christmas Day, Pastor Fritz gathered the children and told them that Kirk had died. And Gunther started to cry, tears like he had never had before. So Pastor Fritz 
picked up little Gunther to comfort him, and he held the child closely to his chest. Gunther stuck his face against Pastor Rich's warm sweater and then reached up to him. Everything has a crack in it. Yes, I know, Pastor Fritz said. That's why Jesus was born for you and for Kirk and for all of us too. Because everything does have a crack in it. The big world in which we live, this world of ours, has a crack of imperfection right through its core. And your life and mine, we too have this crack of flawed lives right through our core. How well we know this. And that is why Jesus came to earth, to heal our hearts, to restore our lives, to patch up the flaws and the cracks in the center of whom we are. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. That in our lives, in our families, in our church, in our community, in our nation, in our world, you are here to give us hope, to give us healing, to patch up the big and the little cracks in our lives, to give us, as the angel said, the good news and the joy of a Savior who is born.